ladies and gentlemen, this is J.R. Moore coming to you live from deep in the mountains of the Missouri Ozarks on Monday, the fifth day of August, year of our Lord, 2019. Welcome to the John Moore Show. We begin our show with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The uh, purple tip of the day is to make sure you got plenty of fire extinguishers here at my place. We keep a fire extinguisher near the outside entrance of every door of every building. Uh, we have many outside entrances in many buildings, and we have a fire extinguisher in, inside the entrance of all those structures. We do have some breaking news I need to mention really quick. This is incredibly important. In the last 24 hours, the country of India has an Next, Kashmir, disputed territory, both claimed by India and Pakistan. Both countries have nuclear weapons. Both countries, and especially Pakistan, the leadership of Pakistan, quite frankly, in my opinion, has a loose grip on reality, and they have nuclear weapons. Uh, and by the way, a little historical fact: uh, a nuclear nuclear weapons were, or nuclear devices, I should say, were discharged there in Kashmir. 12,000 years ago. Uh, that's well known within archaeological circles, by the way. So it's a, it's a flashpoint. Um, Pakistan is allied with uh, North Korea. India is allied with China, I believe. Um, it's a very dangerous situation that we need to pay attention to. We have a patient waiting in the green room, my friend Sam Andrews. Sam is the proprietor of Freedom Center USA down there in beautiful Lebanon, Missouri. The uh, Facebook page is Freedom Center USA. Telephone number if you need information about classes coming up or help getting a firearm or getting fire modifications. Uh, just give Sam a call at 417-718-2597. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, John. How are you, sir? Well, looking forward to another beautiful summer day, more or less uh, seasonal temperatures. How about yourself, sir? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm just watching Trump start to talk about gun control. And well, that uh, I knew up. this. Yes. Yeah. Knew this, Go ahead. I knew this was coming. The, uh, the, the bill that passed the House, uh, what, what does that entail? Are you talking about the United States House? Right, right. I haven't I haven't seen the bill from the US House. You talk I think I think uh I think from the mass shootings that happened over the weekend there will be some bills passing that address that from the House, but probably not the Senate. Have you seen anything specific? Well it, it, here's um, I'm I'm working from limited knowledge myself. There was a bill that passed the House of Representatives earlier this year in 2019 uh, that called for enhanced background checks. Now, I don't know the details. The Democrats are urging the president to, uh, and the Senate, of course, to pass it, and then the, Senate, the, the president to sign it. President Trump has made uh, some statements uh, that he would uh, agree to some kind of enhanced background checks, and that's as much as I know at the moment. Well, he's saying right now he would sign a combined bill. He just put this out in the last 24 hours, that he would sign a combined bill that included enhanced background checks and his immigration policy changes. I knew this guy was a deal maker, and he was going to sell the Second Amendment down the river, and I'll tell you why I knew. He picked the head of the Fraternal Order of Police, who is no friend of the Second Amendment, he nominated this guy to head the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Right, right. Now, this is a guy staffing to enforce gun control. This is not a guy who's pro the Bill of Rights or the Second Amendment or the Tenth Amendment. That's for sure. Right, right. Well, the... Uh... The whole concept, uh, uh, the publicly stated concept of this legislation is that uh, when we pass laws, criminals will follow the edicts of laws that are passed. That's the concept, which is a flawed concept from the get-go, isn't it? Well, that's insane. The definition of a criminal 
is a person who ignores the law and does what he wants. That's how you become a criminal. The very process of becoming a criminal precludes you from being someone who gives a rat's whatever about the law. Now, using the same logic, uh, if a liquor store posted a sign at the front door, it's illegal to, to rob this store, then the criminals would obviously turn around and walk away. If a bank posted a sign at the front door, it's illegal to rob this bank, then the bank robber would say, oh, shucks, there's a sign here. It's against the law to rob this bank, so I guess I can't go in there and rob it. It, it is basically the same logic, isn't it? Well, it's the same lack of logic, obviously. The, the, the insanity of the left is just grown and grown and grown. And you know what? They're going, and Trump's going to participate in this, they're going to push us into a civil war. And see, here's the thing. The liberals know that if they can get Trump to sign on to gun control, he will alienate his base and lose in 2020. It's the only way that they can get Trump to be defeated in 2020 is to get him to alienate his base by signing on to gun control. And if Trump takes the bait, he won't be president in 2020, and we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble either way. But uh, I agree with you. In fact, I was having the same thought. We must have been reading my mind this morning here, Sam, or I was reading your mind. Uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. Alienating the base means that, that not the base won't vote for the other guy. They just won't vote at all, will they? Yeah, that's exactly right. There, you know, guys like me, I can't vote for somebody who passes gun control. I won't go to the polls and vote for Trump if he starts passing gun control which he's now already said he would gladly do. Well, I'm, uh, I'm meeting tomorrow with a Republican who uh, is uh, very active uh, with uh, the, the matter of getting President Trump elected in the state of Missouri, I guess you could say. I don't want to get into any more detail. But uh, I've been called in as an advisor uh, to... Uh, uh, advise on security for the uh, premises that I'll be visiting. Um, and that will be one of the topics we'll be discussing, uh, obviously. This is, uh, this is a big deal, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is a game changer. If, if Trump takes the bait, this completely changes the political landscape and accelerates this country towards a civil war. Now, twice in the last um, years since uh, Obama got elected, when Obama got elected the first time and the second time, uh, refresh my memory, but I, I recall the second time he got elected, uh, or maybe it was the first, within uh, three days, every AR-15 in the United States was sold out, both retail and wholesale. Is that your recollection? Yeah, I mean, I mean it, was, uh, it, it was fairly quickly. Yes, because I, I was tracking that at the time. So that would have been, what, November of, uh, oh boy, was that 2008 when he got elected the first time? Obama? Yes. Obama was yeah. elected for the first time in 2008, and he won re-election in 2012, right, yeah. right, right, after, right before the Sandy Hook incident. Yeah. Well, I, I recall, now that my, the cobwebs are getting pushed aside here, he was elected, it would have been on a Tuesday, by Friday, is my recollection, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every retailer and every wholesaler in the country was sold out of AR-15. That's, that's my recollection. Well, it, it, it was, uh, I think, I want, I want to say that uh, Sandy Hook was around December, November or December of 2012. And uh, I believe that I sold the last AR that I had in inventory um, 36 hours after the Sandy Hook incident. Right. I right. sold That's... every magazine in the store after 48 hours after the incident. I remember I was talking out to of you. Ammo. Yeah. I remember talking yeah, to you. Yeah, I was out of ammunition day one. Right. Uh, well, this pending legislation, uh, I'm pretty sure, would require 
uh, background checks, federal involvement in private sales, private transfers. It's going to include transfers. So if I want to loan my nephew a uh, pistol to go to the range and, and enjoy the afternoon and bring it back, uh, we would have to make an appointment with a gun dealer before I could uh, loan him that pistol to have a fun afternoon with my pistol and bring it back home to me. Uh, I think that's where this legislation is, he- is headed. What do you think? Well, I don't, I don't really care where the legislation's headed. What you're going to see is massive civil disobedience, just like on the bump stock ban. Nobody turned their bump stocks in. Right. Everybody right. knows that federal gut laws are unconstitutional. And what you're going to see is massive, massive civil disobedience. The only thing, the only thing that stronger background checks are going to do is to, is to delay law abiding citizens getting a gun legally. And you know, by the way, both of these shooters involved in Ohio and in El Paso, Texas, apparently passed background checks. Right, right. So, so you, you know, if you're a first-time shooter, a first-time criminal, before you commit that first crime, you can always pass a background check. And these types of incidents are planned ahead of time. And usually the guys don't plan on surviving them. 90% of the time they shoot themselves. So, you know, to, to say that a law is going to fix this. Now, maybe if we want to pass a law, let's pass a law about psychotropic drug control because every single one of these mass shooters have been on psychotropic drugs for depression. Let's talk about a psychotropic drug control law if we want to actually address the problem. Well, it, it, that is the problem, and being involved in in uh, the justice system since 1973. I, I've observed this firsthand. They, uh, they emptied out the psychiatric hospitals uh, in the period 1969-1970 nationwide, which did two things. It, it instantly created the nationwide homeless problem and instantly put among the general population people who are dangerous to themselves and others. Uh, uh, before 1969, the, the men, it's almost always men, of course, doing these mass shootings, they would have been uh, locked up where they couldn't hurt anybody. Uh, That's all changed, hasn't it? Oh, everything's changed. And let me tell you something. Donald Trump is right now staffing for gun control. He nominated Chuck Canterbury to be the head of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearm, and Explosive Group, to be the director. Chuck Canterbury is the former president of the Fraternal Order of Police, this guy is so pro-gun control. I mean, this guy is no friend of the Second Amendment or the Bill of Rights, and this guy refused to answer senators' questions about gun control during his interview by senators. How do you get away with that? This, you should watch the videos. It is remarkable. He says, he says well, I, I'm not going to answer questions like that because I don't have my staff here. Or he'd say, well, I'm going to take the <laughs> advice of my staff and the Department of Justice on legal matters. Oh, really? This is confirmation Yeah, those are answers. Yeah, confirmation it is confirmation here. here. Okay. Well, that's, I, remember, that's just... I remember Senator Mike Lee from Utah asking him the question, are you telling me you have no positions independent of the Fraternal Order of Police on firearms? And if so... How are we to evaluate you as a committee member if we don't know where you stand on questions of policy of the Bureau of Alcohol Tech back on Firearms Department? Okay. And another guy, John Kennedy, the Republican from Louisiana, said, I like straight answers, and you're being evasive. Evasive. You've been nominated to run the ATF. I think every member of this panel, both Democratic and Republican, who have feelings about the Second Amendment are entitled to know morally and legally what you believe. Okay, and this guy c- continued on. He he, re- he literally refused to answer, and this is how how aggressively he was grilled. Well, I mean, he was he was certainly he was certainly prepped before he went in there to expect those questions. Uh, well, Sam, before we get uh, to the first break here, what is our firearms tip of the week, sir? 
firearms tip of the week is based on the events of last week. Practice your skills in the dark. Learn to do it safely. Use snap caps, never live ammo. But practice loading magazines, unloading magazines, putting magazines in your firearm. Practice all of the skills that you need to fight with in the dark. If you don't own that skill in the dark, you don't own it. And remember, 95% of armed encounters happen after the sun goes down. That's right. That's right. Now, is there uh, any training you, pro- you can provide to help people get those skills to work in the dark? Absolutely. Everything we do, we do, we do blindfolded at some point in our training. Uh, we absolutely have people do everything blindfolded in our classes that they would do in the daytime in broad daylight. And we have a, we have a motto at the Freedom Center. If you don't own it in the dark, you don't own it. So you guys better start getting proficient with your firearms in pitch black conditions. In other words, you can't see your fingers in front of your face. Well, that's good advice. That's good advice. And, uh, of course, at uh, Freedom Center USA, you offer uh, all types of training there, don't you, sir? Absolutely. Handgun, rifle, shotgun, uh, pistol, you, you name it. We, we can bring an instructor in here to teach. Like so far, I guess in the next 30 days, we've got a long-range precision ammo reloading class on the schedule. We have a long-range rifle shooting class on the schedule. We're just about to schedule Brandon Rapolo, the MARSOC Marine, to come in and teach a close quarters battle course, which involves fighting with your rifle and your pistol integrated together. That is a fantastic class. Absolutely. Hold that thought. Call number is 800-313-9443. We'll be right back. It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We here at RBN are working with Front Sight Firearms Training Institute to bring our audience the best in combat, tactical, and defensive firearms training. Whether you're a private citizen who is new to firearms or you have a concealed weapon permit and want a level of training that surpasses what you've received from your local gun range, Front Sight provides priceless education and skills taught by seasoned law enforcement, military, and private citizen instructors to levels that far exceed law enforcement and military standard. With nearly a million responsible citizens trained from every town, city, and state from across the United States, Front Sight has bolstered the Patriot movement to a whole new level. Contact Dan Sutterfield by phone at 573-762-2356 or 573-465-2356 or shoot him an email at Dome Dan, D-O-M-E-D-A-N at hotmail.com. This is a limited time opportunity. Don't miss it. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 5th day of July. We're going on a cruise. It will be a Valentine's Day cruise, of all things, leaving February 9th, coming back the 16th from Cape Can- uh, Port Canaveral. I sort of say Cape Canaveral, Port Canaveral. Details at my website at thelibertyman.com. If you don't have internet access, give our cruise director a call. She'll mail you a nice full-color brochure. Betsy Murphy, her telephone number is 636 530 Nine five zero two. I say again, six three six five three zero nine five zero two. This is Farmers Monday, visiting with Sam Andrews, the proprietor of Freedom Center USA. That Facebook page is Freedom Center USA. The telephone number is four one seven seven one eight two five nine seven. Sam, uh, uh, I know you're talking to your wife about going on the uh, Valentine's Day cruise. Will this uh, have you gotten anywhere with that so far? Uh, she's waiting back uh, for uh, confirmation from her work about days off. Okay. Well, so that's far we, enough. We are, we, are, we are trying to make this happen. Outstanding. Well, it would be a lot of fun to have you along. 
Uh, my Tuesday guest, Leon Green, will be with us, and um, it'll be a lot of fun. And uh, you'll people that go will get to mingle and, and visit with people they would never, ever be able to otherwise. Well, Sam, um, the uh, pending order for the uh, uh, thermal optics, is that still pending or has it been submitted? No, we submitted the order. The money's been transferred. It's all done. You know, we had all right. We had uh, we had uh, uh, seven people save themselves about eight hundred bucks a piece on thermal uh, sites that give you the best capability for night fighting. And uh, every model they ordered had the edge detect feature, which uh, keeps your screen relatively dark but draws a tiny, super thin white line around your target, making it very easy to put the crosshairs on. Right, right. Well, that sounds like excellent technology. Uh, well, there'll be another group order coming up, uh, I assume, soon, and, and I'll be wanting to participate in that one, so we can talk more about that privately. But um, the, uh, the whole t- issue of optics is one that's fast-changing, uh, always something new every two or three months seems like there's a, a something slightly new in the world of optics isn't there sir yeah and i like to tell people don't try and buy tomorrow's technology today you spend way too much money and you may or may not get something that that lives up to its promises always try and uh, buy something that's proven that's relatively up-to-date technology but it's been proven in battle something that's proven to be durable, something that's proven to be reliable, and something that's proven to be able to work at night. That's good advice. That's real good advice. Oh, uh, we had a pistol class uh, Saturday at your place, concealed carry class, the first one I've done in, uh, well, a year and a half. Uh, I think um, 26, no, it's been longer than that. It's been 2016 was the last class I did. I haven't done it all of 2017, all of 18, so it's two and a half years, uh, a little more than two and a half years. We had a good turnout. Everybody seemed to enjoy themselves. Uh, we uh, got some people qualified there. They got their certificates, including yourself, by the way. <laughs> you needed to get an updated certificate. Um, yeah, and, I needed uh, my we'll, updated certificate. We'll, uh, we'll be doing this again sometime soon, won't we? Oh yeah, we'll try and we'll try and do this at least every six to eight weeks. Um, there's not as much demand for a concealed carry permit for two reasons: a lot of people already have permits, and also a lot of people don't realize what the laws are. They think Missouri is an open carry, constitutional carry state, and it's not, particularly if you live in certain cities. So you need to understand that. There are certain laws that you can be caught in jeopardy of if you don't have a concealed carry permit right here in Missouri. And also, if you travel, that's another reason if you travel out of state to absolutely have a concealed carry permit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, here's a heads up for for all you folks out there. Um, uh, There's several ways. The one I'm most familiar with to find out about reciprocity, that's agreements between the 50 attorney generals of the 50 states as to uh, granting reciprocity for concealed carrying. Uh, one place I go to frequently is the NRA ILA website, the United States, the National Rifle Association Institute for Legislative Action website. Uh, they keep up to date on that. There's other ways that uh, I have not used, uh, but it, it is easy to find, find out uh, about reciprocity, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, it's easy to find out online. There's, there's a number of concealed carry uh, websites that track the changes to the law by state. So if you're traveling west and you want to look at Kansas and Colorado and and uh, Utah, you can do that. If you want to look at Texas and Louisiana, you can do that. And I would highly recommend before you travel that you do go to one of the more credible websites and look at any changes to the law as far as con- carrying a handgun and reciprocity for your permit in that specific state. Right, right. It's kind of an antiquated system, but it works. It, it doesn't involve the legislature. It involves a private agreements between the 50 attorney generals that uh, will recognize or not recognize each other. Here's our break. Call number is 800-313-9443.
You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Monday, the 5th of August. Fast-moving world. Lots of things happening. One way to keep up is scroll down. You have to scroll down a little bit, too. Well, let's see. Where did we? Where did that go? Um, well, I have to apologize. Uh, it looks like we have uh, something missing on my website here that we need to we need to get back up there. Oh we go, it's not in red anymore. We need to get it back to red. Open source intelligence is right down there at second block of, of three. Uh, third block of three, excuse me. Uh, posted uh, daily by a friend of mine, former counterintelligence agent. Uh, news from all over the world, uh, great sources, Associated Press and others. Uh, with this uh, situation involving India and Pakistan we really need to stay on top of that. This is uh, very dangerous. Uh, two nations both have nuclear weapons, and uh, they hate each other. Uh, one nation is Muslims. The other nation is Hindus. Uh, was one country under Britain. They split up uh, just after World War II and they became two countries. Very dangerous situation. Also on our website, of course, our energy cleaners for sale. This is my home business. If you're tired of being tired, if you want to have a great night's sleep every night like I do, well, get yourself an energy cleaner. Seriously, what are you waiting for? $285 should be included to American zip codes. If you're healing from surgery, you need an energy cleaner. Frequently, people using an energy cleaner heal with no sign they ever had an incision. How about that? Keep in mind, I offer a 90-day money-back guarantee. Check out the mattress pads to go with it. Everything's right there at my website at thelibertyman.com. I have a toll-free our line, too. It's 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. You have a question or comment, give us a call here at Republic Broadcasting at 800-313-9443. Sam, we got a caller on hold here. we got Jerry in Texas. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Sam and John. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go back to archives and listen to a lot of the first uh, 30 minutes there, I was QSL with him, buddy. But uh, anyway, uh, the uh, this deal with the ATF uh, director, I think he is, and what have you, kind of reminds me, John, of uh, maybe the precursor to enemies uh, foreign to domestic. You got to get that some, idea. There are some similarities, yes. Yeah, Matt Bracken. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I just I think it, uh, Go ahead, Sam. I'm sure. I, I think what you're seeing is what you're seeing is what you always see in the presidency. You see the president staffing for policy change. He's putting people in place that are going to implement the policies that he wants implemented. I think it's that simple. Okay, and uh, that is gun control? That in, in this case, is gun control. Trump has already publicly come out and said he would sign a gun control deal with the Democrats if it would include some of his immigration policies, and that is Trump the dealmaker in his glory. Okay. Well, you know, I... I don't know, folks. You know, I, I hear people bashing Trump from time to time. John and I have had this discussion. You know, I say, well, uh, give me somebody that uh, can do a better job. Uh, folks, we're doomed. <laughs> uh, I don't I, I like to be an optimist, but uh, uh, this, is, this is very disconcerting. But uh, I, it's 
John and I had this discussion the other day of taking the Civil War, and uh, I told him I looked at it more as the second American Revolution. But I find it curious with all of the shootings. I don't know if I, I saw it this morning. They uh, uh, were they were forty people shot in Chicago over the weekend. Three fatalities. You know uh, that's business as usual up there. We we very seldom hear that. And how, what were the shootings? Was it gang shootings, black on black, black on white, white on black? Uh, what was that? But that just uh, lucky to get a little blip on the radar about that. But uh, and then we got the people in Juarez uh, protesting this morning about uh, three of those that were killed in El Paso was Mexican nationals. Imagine that. You know, uh, what about all the people that are killed and disappeared in war as every day due to the drug cartels? Uh, do we ever hear that? I may be rehashing some stuff that I've already talked about, but, uh, I find all that very curious. So, uh, business as usual, I guess, folks. It is. It is. Jerry, thank you for the call, sir. Thanks for taking my call. Y'all have a good week in spite of everything. Uh, Jerry, take care. Well, I, John, I know this is going to be hard for people, but this country has to wake up. You have to acknowledge the situation that we are in. Ronald Reagan banned more guns than all other presidents combined. Yet we hail him as this bastion of conservative leadership and a hero. Not all presidents are solid on all elements of the Bill of Rights. And when you have a president that's willing to make a deal with the Democrats for gun control, you have to admit that he's more in the Bob Dole vein of a U.S. president being a deal maker. Bob Dole was a senator that was notorious for making dirty deals with the Democrats. You've got a Bob Dole in the White House now. You don't have Thomas Jefferson in the White House. You have to be realistic and admit. You know what Winston Churchill said? He said, he said watch what people do, not what they say. And in Absolutely. this case, you can see what Trump is doing and what he is saying. And you have to acknowledge reality. Absolutely. Here's our next caller, Russ in Montana. Good morning, Russ. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. Good morning, Russ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had some questions about AK mags. You, you've said you've done quite a bit of testing, and uh, I would like to give you guys, give you a call later and see if you had a bunch of AK mags I could buy from you, and what what brand do you think are the best? Okay, call me. Call me. I'm in physical therapy literally immediately after the radio show. So uh, give okay. me a call around 1 o'clock uh, uh, your time, and we'll go over that. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to also bring up about I, I, I am fed up with this talk of gun control, and I think I fed, I'm, I'm at my last stand with Trump. And then uh, this morning I've been listening to the you know radio and news, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dan Crenshaw. Um, yep. He's the representative of the Navy he's a SEAL from, from Texas. Yeah, and he's on board with the red flag and all that this morning too. I've watched him. You know, he's the Navy SEAL, and so he's on he's on board with the gun control as well. So he's another one adding to it today, and he's coming out yeah, big that, for the red flag the hard, laws this morning. That, that's the hard message that all conservatives don't want to hear. They don't understand. It's the Republicans, just like Ronald Reagan, it's the Republicans that are coming for your guns. Yeah, you yeah no, I, I agree with that yeah. now. So, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I, so I'm definitely this, uh, I'm voting as hard left as I can vote from here on out because if, if, if the Republicans and the, and, the, and the conservatives won't do the right thing for the right reasons, maybe they'll do it the right thing for the wrong reasons and, we can just push this thing into a fruition, you know, push it to a head, because I'm, I'm done. I'm not vote I don't care what Trump does from here on out. I'm not voting for him. So, anyhow, guys, yeah, I appreciate it. Your show is great, John, and, yeah. Okay. Thanks for the I call, Russ. Really appreciate anyhow, it. I'll give you a call. I'll give you a call, Sam. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate okay. your time. Thank you. 
Talk to you then. Bye bye. Calling him. See, right, John, right, this, is, this is the problem. Go ahead. This is the problem when when supposedly conservative leadership fails. They compromise the trust of everyone that would have voted for them. So there aren't going to be massive conservatives going out and voting for the Democrat, but what they are going to do is stay home. And this is the strategy that will win the Democrat the election in 2020, is to disenfranchise all of Trump's supporters and get Trump to support gun control, which they have now successfully got him to publicly state he will do. Well, that's a shame. It's, it's disappointing, but uh, we need to deal with it, don't we? It's a massive massive issue. This is going to accelerate everything to the head. I knew this was coming. I told everybody it was coming months ago that they're going to get Trump. When when Trump said publicly in a meeting on national TV, the, he asked the question, well, why don't we just take the guns and have a hearing later, which is a blatantly unconstitutional thing to do. It violates the Fourth Amendment in the clearest way. When he said that, I thought, oh, the Democrats are going to bait him into doing something against gun rights, and they're going to bait him into doing it right before the 2020 election, and they're going to get him to alienate his base. And boy, have they been successful at that. I also want to say I have a video of an El Paso eyewitness that described four men dressed in black shooting in a Walmart. That's, I've, got, uh, I've got people that... Yeah, that's receiving a lot of attention. That is receiving a lot of attention. Most Walmart stores, especially one that's big, probably have, uh, I would say, three dozen or more video cameras recording everything that takes place in those stores. So those videos do exist. Yep, and, and I think it's remarkable that a kid with iron sights had the kill ratio that he had, um, being his age with that type of weapon system, and had the ratio that he had, I'm, I'm stunned that, uh, I mean, that guy, you know, shoots like a trained operator. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Well, I, I, I've got some real questions about the El Paso shooting. Now, the one in Ohio I haven't looked at in detail, but I guarantee you if this is a false flag, that you're going to see the judge will seal all the evidence and the American people will never see the video from that Walmart shooting. Multiple, multiple videos. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, active shooter situation where the active shooter uh, wore uh, hearing protection and eye protection. Uh, I, I'm not aware of that ever happening before. Are you? No, but I can understand a wealthy kid that grew up in a wealthy family. He goes to the gun range. He wears his ears and his eyes just as a matter of habit. Uh, you know, I can understand that. But here's the thing. Watch them seal the evidence, just like they did in Las Vegas. I have sound video that proves there were three different weapons being fired in Las Vegas. There's one rifle firing supersonic ammo unsuppressed. There's two weapon systems firing supersonic ammo suppressed, two different weapon systems. And I can show you the audio, the, the sound waves from the audio files that prove there's three distinct weapons from three different distances from the microphone firing in the Las Vegas shooting. These shootings are not what the media is portraying them to be. And when you see the police agencies completely seal the evidence, you know there's a big problem. Right, right. Well, we'll be waiting to see if they seal up the evidence in this one, won't we? And I would suspect that the that the El Paso shooting, they will seal the evidence on. They probably won't on the Ohio shooting. I think the Ohio shooting um, uh, it was a liberal socialist who supported um, Pocahontas long before Trump ever took office. And I think you're going to I think you're going to find that uh, that the Ohio shooting was a typical typical crazy socialist slash communist kid with white suburban angst on psychotropic drugs I think you're going to find the Texas shooting to be a black false flag and you're going to see all the evidence sealed down in Texas watch it happen well I'm certainly not going to put any money against that uh, prognostication there Sam not at all uh, well 
Well, let's talk a little bit about what a person should do if they find themselves uh, in, in a situation where an active shooter, uh, is, active shooting is taking place. Uh, the best thing to do is to escape, in my opinion. What do you think? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter what type of a, a threat situation you're in. The first move is always to move to cover immediately. The nearest cover you have is 99% of the time the right move. Move to cover immediately. And if you can't find cover, find concealment. And let's talk a little bit about the difference between cover and concealment. Cover is where if someone shoots in your direction, the bullet cannot pass through what you're standing behind. Concealment is something that you can hide behind where it's difficult to see you, but it's not strong enough to stop a bullet. Always choose cover if it's available. If you have no cover, choose concealment and get low. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have a caller and holder. We got Jimmy in Florida. Good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, John. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. Go ahead. You're on air. Uh, Sam, I have a question. What ammunition brand uh, do you recommend for long-term storage? I remember John talked about a specific brand about two years ago, but uh, I lost uh, the date on the archives. Okay, uh, John, could you repeat the question if you heard well, it because uh, he was a little more Jimmy, Jim, yeah, the, the connection is a little weak there. Jimmy's question is what brand of ammunition do you recommend for long-term storage? Uh, for rifle or pistol? Rifle. For rifle ammunition, I would recommend Hornady ammunition in most cases. Um, uh, that, if you can afford it, I would recommend Lapua. Lapua makes the finest ammunition of the large companies, uh, but there's three companies that I like from a rifle standpoint. Lapua, I would rank number one. Uh, Hornady, I would rank number two. And uh, Black Hills, I would rank number three. For handgun ammunition, I would rank Corbon number one, Hornady number two, and the Federal Hydroshock uh, Ammo number three. No, well, I appreciate that. Thank okay, you. Okay, Jimmy. Yeah, thank you for the call. The call number is 800-313-9443. And, of course, you want to store the ammunition in a low-humidity, cool uh, location. we got a break. We'll be right back. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Public Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. Back with gentlemen Jared Moore here on Monday, the fifth day of August, visiting with Sam Andrews, the proprietor of Freedom Center USA. No website, but there is a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Freedom Center USA LLC. Telephone number down there is 417-718-2597. Let's continue, Sam. 
Okay, I think I think we we've, we've had some people in government in the United States show their colors in the past few days, and your your uh, your guy from uh, Montana brought up the representative from Texas. Uh, this guy is a Republican. He's former military. And he's not, his name is Representative Dan Crenshaw. I would highly recommend you call his office and tell him how full of crap he is, okay? But he is now pushing for red flag laws and gun control in the United States. This is a Republican congressman from the state of Texas, if you can believe it, is now pushing for gun control in the United States of America. Well, uh... There's many terms for men and women like that. One of the more popular ones is Rhino, Republican in name only. Uh, it's a shame. It's disappointing, but they are out there, aren't they? Well, and this is a this is a this is a guy retired from the Tier One team. This is a guy who 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 worked in the special operations community. This is a guy who not only swore an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic but actually walk the walk for a while. And now he's saying basically what what the anyone that that's voting for gun control what they're saying is is that the government should have guns and the people should not. And I want you to think about that because governments have killed over 200 million people in the last 100 years. 200 million of their own citizens, not talking about wars, 200 million of their own citizens in the last 100 years. How does the threat of a mass shooter once every year or two pale in comparison to 200 million lives being destroyed by governments? The idea that governments should be the only ones to have guns is not only dangerous, but it's insane. I agree. I agree, and we need to keep that in the front of our brains. Well, I've heard it said a number of times recently there's more firearms in this country than there are people, which is a true statement, isn't it? It's absolutely true. We have about 77 million armed citizens, and we have about 18 million armed veterans. And so, you know, if people wake up and stand up for their rights, there's no way anyone's going to take your guns. I can promise you that. There, there's going to be a fight, and it won't last long. No. no. Well, I know the law enforcement uh, men and women in, in my neighborhood here, they're not going to participate in such things. Uh, it just simply won't happen. And uh, our sheriff is a former Marine, and he won't allow the Federals to come in and, and engage in that activity either. Here's our top of the hour break. The call is 800-313-9443. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 5th day of August. Purple tip of the day, be sure and have plenty of fire extinguishers. Check them, make sure they're in good condition, and um, it's just a good idea to have uh, a number of fire extinguishers around the house. We like to keep one near every outdoor entrance here at my place. This is Fires Monday, visiting with Sam Andrews, a proprietor of Freedom Center USA, that Facebook page, which is Freedom Center USA. The telephone number down there in beautiful Lebanon, Missouri is 417-718-2597. Sam, uh, I think we've spent enough time this morning on on firearms legislation and and the gun culture and the anti-gun culture that we're dealing with. Let's get it more into firearms-related topics uh, for the second hour, sir. Okay, I just want to I just want to open the hour with something from Chris Ann Hall. She's a constitutional scholar. She's an attorney. She's a former Florida prosecutor, and I just want everyone to remember what she said. She said, "This is the only question that has any relevance in the gun control debate. Do you trust those in government now and forever in the future?" to not take your life, liberty, or property through the force of government? If the answer to that question is no, you do not trust the government from now all into the future forever, then the gun control debate is over. And I think she's exactly right. 
And what I'd like to uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give a tip to some of our hand loaders out there, because you know uh, the people that hand load their own ammunition, they have a huge percentage of the ammo that's owned by Americans in this country. And I want to talk about how to properly seal your ammunition. Okay, when you're loading it, there's a right and a wrong way to seal ammo. There's primer sealers like Roy's primer sealers that will waterproof the primer area. I highly recommend that you do that for ammo you want to bet your life on. And then there's there are these Loctite products that the military uses, mil-spec products, for sealing the bullet in the neck area for waterproofing that seal where the bullet presses into the neck. I don't recommend those. When we were loading powdered tungsten ammunition for SEAL Team 6, we developed a different methodology. We take a wax, like new car finish was the most durable in our saltwater test. You take new car finish wax, you can buy it at Walmart for $7 a bottle and do 10,000 rounds with it. But you take this new car finish and you put a tiny ring, like a thin donut, around the base of the bullet not at the very bottom of the bow tail, but just an eighth of an inch below what will be inside the the case neck. And you just put a ring of that wax around that and go ahead and press your bullet in place, and you will have zero waterproofing issues with that ammo in any environment you'll ever encounter. Now, that product is new. It's uh, November Uniform, new car, correct? Yes. It's, it's spelled N-U, and it comes in a big orange bottle, and boy, does it hold up in a saltwater test. And the great news is, with the Loctite products, they would gradually harden over six to months to a year, and they would actually cause overpressure problems in the ammo. If you let it sit for a long period of time, it would gradually glue itself in, stronger, stronger, and stronger, and it would cause pressure problems when you fired it a year later, where this new finish technique for the bullet in the neck causes no change in pressure whatsoever, no matter how long you let it sit. Well, it sounds like uh, the best of both worlds, doesn't it? Absolutely. It absolutely works fantastic. And so get yourself a good primer sealer and seal your primers, and then get yourself some new, new finish, wax it's a very very durable synthetic wax and just put a thin ring around the bullet about i want to say two hundred thousandths up from the very bottom of the bullet right before you press it in place and and uh, then as you press it in place just wipe the neck area where the bullet goes in when you're done and you've got a well sealed round of ammunition that's really good news. That's really good news, and that should be encouraging. Uh, and this will be sealed better than pretty much all factory ammunition, wouldn't it? Oh, much better than any factory ammo for sure. Amazing, amazing, and uh, simple and inexpensive. I like that. That's certainly uh, very, very outstanding. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the call number. This is Firearms Money. The call number is eight hundred three one three nine four four three. Uh, so uh, people have been t- asking me, how's your physical rehab coming along there, Sam? Oh, it's uh, it's coming along extremely slowly. <laughs> you literally scratch and claw for every improvement in strength in your physical therapy sessions. It's, you know, when I was a young man and I hadn't been weight training for a few months, I would get in the weight room for three or four weeks and I would literally double my strength. But as an older man with type 2 diabetes, having just gone through shoulder surgery, they started me off with curling two pounds. It took me a week to get to three pounds where I could do 15 reps. It's taken me four weeks to get to 15 pounds. Now, normally at my age when I'm healthy, I can curl a 45 in each hand. So right now I'm at about 33% strength. And I've been working like a dog for five weeks. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I tell people it's, it's, you know, it's like living on the edge of your couch. <laughs> like living on the edge of your couch. Okay. 
I like that. Yeah, people ask me, hey, Sam, how are you doing with the shoulder? I'm like, oh, I'm living on the edge of my sofa. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, getting back to firearms, we, we, we were some discussion over the weekend about um, uh, slings and, and how you need a wide, heavily padded sling to comfortably carry a heavy rifle. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, when, when I was in Ferguson, um, we were guarding people in apartments and guarding businesses and a dentist office and a bakery and a beauty supply store, all these different types of buildings that were layered first and second and third floor, a Chinese restaurant, that type of thing, a lawyer's office, believe it or not. And uh, when we were there, a lot of times we were there for 15 hours, 13 hours at a time. And where normally we'd used a rifle sling, if you've used a rifle sling for hunting, walking into the woods, walking out, or out west, you're on a sheep hunt, you use a sling all day. You know, but what we learned was when you go past the six, seven hour mark with a sling, a one inch nylon web sling does not cut it. And, and it will become extremely uncomfortable at about the six, seven hour mark. So what we did was we, we just learned to design a better sling. After day one in Ferguson, I, was, I went back to the shop and said, all right, I've got to come up with something better than this. So what we did was we put together a rifle sling that you can use single point or two point and go back and forth between them in a matter of seconds, but also a padded sling that was two inches wide versus the one-inch nylon web tactical sling. And boy, was I a lot more comfortable on night two than I was the first the first fifteen hours. Right, right. Well, I've been using M60 machine gun slings for oh uh, my probably twenty five years or so. Uh, they are about two inches wide, heavily padded, and uh, for me, they do the job. Uh, they distribute that weight of a twelve pound rifle very nicely. Uh, you still feel the weight, but at least it's not cutting into your shoulder. Yeah, and I think it's. I think that's a really wise thing. I, I think people, if you have one-inch web slings on your go-to weapon for defensive work, in today's political climate, I would seriously look at finding a wider sling that's padded in that area or something you can slide on to that one-inch web sling. If you don't have money to buy a new sling, sliding a pad onto there so that you can wear it for the long haul and not have it cut into your shoulder or your neck. Right. And that gets real uncomfortable real quick. And, and uh, of course, you're stuck. You can't get away from it. You have to be where you are. You have to have the firearm. And you're just stuck putting up with the pain. What you're going to end up doing is, is putting your hand between uh, your shoulder and the strap in an effort to relieve the pain. Uh, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, they say. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. You start to get uncomfortable, and it starts to distract you from your mission. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm all about being a tough guy and dealing with things. But the little things that you do that can allow you to operate and stay alert and not stress you out, anything you can do in that regard will really help you over a week or two-week or three-week period where you're constantly on in level three on red alert. And so... The wider sling with a little bit of padding is a great thing that will help you focus on what you need to focus on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could not agree more. And uh, it reminds me of what my drill sergeant told me in basic training. He says, more, never get cold, never get wet, never get hungry. Uh, he's talking about being in the Army and getting by. And if you keep those three things in mind, never get cold, never get wet, never get hungry, You'll be more or less comfortable, won't you? Well, and you'll be a lot more likely to survive. You know, Major General Hollingsworth, you know, ingrained into our heads that amateurs study tactics and professionals study logistics. The first time he said that to me, I asked him, I said, sir, what do you mean by that? And he said, it's real simple, son. He said, the first guy to run out of food, water, ammo, or shelter loses. Absolutely. And that's been proven through, through time immemorial. Uh, and General Sun Tzu certainly emphasizes that when it comes to planning and how you can't overlook the, the uh, 
the ever important issue of logistics. Uh, and I think that's, uh, there's no doubt about that. It's been proven to be an accurate assessment uh, for many, many centuries, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. You, you can't win if you can't stay in the fight. You can't help anyone else if you haven't taken care of yourself. And so th there has to be that personal discipline where you stay dry, you stay warm, you stay well-fed, you stay well-hydrated, you have plenty of ammo, you have plenty of cleaning supplies to keep your gun running. If you can't take care of your business, it won't be very long before you have no ability to help anyone else. So keep that in mind, those of you with large families. If you're the man of the house, understand that. that you have to be able to take care of business ahead of time, and that is the margin that affords you the ability to help other people and to secure your communities. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Got a question or comment about firearms? Anything related to firearms, or gun culture, rifles, shotguns, pistols, give us a call at 800-313-9443. Something we haven't talked about much is rifle stocks, and the technology of rifle stocks the last 20 years has changed dramatically, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. It's, it's gone from wood to aluminum, to fiberglass, to carbon fiber and Kevlar uh, matrices. Uh, it's just, it's made some revolutionary changes. It is. And uh, when I was a boy, uh, the, the competition was to who could create the, the most beautiful, most highly polished, Museum quality wood stock. It seemed like that. That was uh, where what was popular, what men wanted. They were taking, even taking World War One bolt action rifles and attempting to turn them into beautiful wood stocks. Um, that's all pretty much. I mean, you can still those types of firearms are still available, obviously, uh, but the uh, the mainstream has gone a, a long way away from that, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's mainly because of accuracy and weight. So when we went to fiberglass stocks, companies like Macmillan started to weight the stocks uh, for bench rest shooters, and then uh, companies like Manners came along making carbon fiber stocks that were stronger, more rigid, and weighed less. And for altitude hunters and people carrying heavy tactical, heavy barreled long-range weapons, that two pounds off a fiberglass stock was a real blessing because the stock was just as rigid, if not more rigid, than the fiberglass stock, but it weighed less. And so that worked really well. And uh, then we started, our company started making titanium pillars that don't expand and contract as much as aluminum pillars do when the temperature changes. And so that made the guns more consistent from an accuracy standpoint. There's just been, we've, we've, gone, we've gone through quite a bit of, of, of evolution from a rifle accuracy standpoint, and also with tremendous weight savings now. Yes, things that uh, the routine off the shelf now that uh, we didn't, we couldn't even conceive of not too long ago. Well, years ago, the most accurate guns were laminated wood stocks that weighed six, seven pounds a piece, with a, a fiberglass, what they called acroglass bedding. Uh, which is basically a uh, fiberglass epoxy resin mixture. And now we have carbon fiber stocks with titanium pillars bedded in titanium epoxy that doesn't even shrink one-tenth of one percent. And the accuracy level and the durability and the weight have, have all improved dramatically. So... Let's say I'm sitting out here listening to Sam Andrews, and I might be anywhere in the country, and I've got myself a, a bolt-action rifle with an older stock on it. Maybe it's a wood stock. Would I be able to call you up and get a recommendation on a, a good upgrade for that stock and maybe a, a couple of different price points? Absolutely. And for us, the lower price point accuracy stocks that we sell are the HS Precision, and the high-end price point that we sell are the Manners carbon fiber stocks, which are just superior to anything on the planet. Now, not too long ago, Macmillan was called in. 
in very high regard. Where's McMillan fall into that mix right now? Oh, uh, we don't use McMillan anymore because the lead times are too long, and they weren't honest with people about lead times. Even even gunsmiths that were pushing their products, they were saying, "Oh yeah, we'll have your stock in four months," and then seven months later, you're calling them, going, "Where is it?" And they say, oh, no. oh, we'll have it next month. We call them again, and they all oh, will have it next month. And and, and and you know, manners just blew them away. So we switched the manners years ago. Roger that. That makes perfect sense. We got a break. Call number is 800 313 9443. It's happening, ladies and gentlemen. We here at RBN are working with Front Sight Firearms Training Institute to bring our audience the best in combat, tactical, and defensive firearms training. Whether you're a private citizen who is new to firearms or you have a concealed weapon permit and want a level of trading that surpasses what you've received from your local gun range, Front Sight provides priceless education and skills taught by seasoned law enforcement, military, and private citizen instructors to levels that far exceed law enforcement and military standard. With nearly a million responsible citizens trained from every town, city, and state from across the United States, Front Sight has bolstered the Patriot movement to a whole new level. Contact Dan Sutterfield by phone at 573-762-2356 or 573-465-2356 or shoot him an email at Dome Dan, D-O-M-E-D-A-N at hotmail.com. This is a limited time opportunity. Don't miss it. First Monday of the month, Monday the August the fifth. We're going on a, a Caribbean cruise for you men and women out there who want a, a little romantic uh, adventure and learn a lot of fun stuff and meet people you never meet otherwise. You want to go on this cruise with us? We leave Port Canaveral Saturday, the ninth day of February. We turn a week later on Saturday the sixteenth. All the details are at my website at thelibertyman.com. Uh, we'll have Leon Green with us, most likely Sam and his wife. We haven't got confirmation yet, but uh, it's a high likelihood. If you don't have internet access, you can give the cruise director, Betsy Murphy, a call. Here's her telephone, 636-530-9502. I say again, 636-530-9502. This is Farmers Monday, visiting with Sam Andrews, the proprietor of Freedom Center USA. Facebook page is Freedom Center USA. That telephone, give us the telephone number, Sam. It's 417-718-2597. All right. Uh, I was at uh, you know, an NRA convention, and I saw this stock for my M14, and I, and I, I talked to the uh, people selling these stocks, and and I, I ordered one on the spot. I just love this stock. Uh, it has all the features I've always wanted for my M14. I've been very pleased with it. Uh, getting a different stock for your rifle can change the entire personality of the rifle, can change uh, the accuracy of the rifle, can change, obviously, the way it looks, the comfort of the rifle. Uh, it's amazing the difference that a stock will make, isn't it, sir? Oh, yeah, the right stock is extremely important to accuracy. It's extremely important to have the ability to affix a tactical light on a weapon system. Uh, it's extremely important that you have a rail that you can put your collimated night vision or thermal sight on. If you're talking about a rifle to fight with, to defend your freedom with, to defend your home and family with, the stock makes the job so much easier because it allows you to integrate everything you need to prevail in a gunfight. Plus, a big bonus. Uh, you, you, you don't have to worry about going in, into the woods with something that, quite frankly, is so beautiful it should belong in a museum, right? Yeah, you know, like you said, 50 years ago, everybody was into the figured walnut and the figured maple stocks with the quilting or the bird's-eye maple or the 
the tiger stripe walnut, you know, all these beautiful high end, I think what they would call grade four walnut stocks. And those are beautiful. They're stunning. They're gorgeous. But that's not what you want to have year round to protect yourself or maybe even to hunt with. Uh, the synthetic stocks are, you know, are, are much, much more durable and they're right, more right. accurate. They're not affected by humidity. There's there's a lot of advantages there. Right, right. Well, uh, th- th- it's just it's just smart, and uh, most likely, uh, I would say more than half the men and women listening to us uh, that own a rifle, which is most everybody listening to this show, uh, they probably have one or more rifles in their safe that could certainly use an upgrade to the stock at a reasonable price to accomplish certain goals and. And they could call you and get some recommendations for any particular rifle, couldn't they? Yeah, we sell stocks and forearms uh, all the time. As a matter of fact, I had a guy in the shop uh, after the concealed carry class that wanted me to switch the rear stock on his weapon system. And I had a second guy there asking me about a forearm change for his AR-15. And I explained to him how to get from A to B on that so he could attach the things that he needed to attach. And, I, you know, I, John, I'm going to have to admit, I probably never admitted this in public before, but I actually believe in a woman's right to choose. And, and I want women to know that we have stocks out there that fit you, and you have the right to choose those. We also have over 20 million American women now that own firearms. So, you know, if you're a gal, you have the right to choose. So choose a stock that fits you and get yourself a firearm that you can enjoy shooting comfortably. Right, right. Uh, calls are pouring in here. First, we go to Lane in Texas. Good morning, Lane. Hello, John and Sam. How are you all today? Really good. What's on your mind, morning. sir? Uh, well, uh, you know, with all this latest round of shootings, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of your listeners out there who may not have ever purchased what I call a black rifle. Uh they, they're, they're either going to choose between the AR-15 or the AK-47. Am I probably one of those two? Uh, due to, uh, well, I, 30 years ago, I didn't know what to buy, uh, just like a lot of your listeners. And nobody at the gun, if you go to the gun show, they're going to try to see whatever they got, be it good or bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only way I found out about it was by owning both of them and, and uh, finding the good and bad. But uh, over the years, I've come to say that uh, if anything happened, I would grab the 30 caliber AK-47. Uh, it's it's uh, the universal bad boy. It's been proven for 70 years in combat. It's almost infallible. You know, shoot in any environment and you know it's still function. The ammo is universally available. The 30 round magazines are universally available. Even spare parts are virtually you can find just so many places online. It's, it's amazing. Uh, so on and so forth. Now, the big question is, they, they get down to it, do I, do I need a milled receiver or a stamped receiver? Okay, we'll, we'll have to I? answer that after the break, Lane. Just to okay. have, hold on. we got a five an hour break. We'll get answer, answer after the break. Hold on. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on... Monday. It's Monday, the 5th day of August. My website is thelibertyman.com. Something new there every day. Typically, under open source intelligence, got nice red letters there. You'll find dozens of articles posted every day by a former intelligence counterintelligence agent. And uh, if you want to know what's going on in the world, you need to be checking that out. Also, what website, of course, is my home business. That's something that will help you wake up pain-free after a great night's sleep, like I do every night. That's the energy cleaner. $285 shipping included. I've shipped hundreds of these, well, at this point, thousands, all over the planet uh, with a 90-day money-back guarantee. Uh, I stand behind these products. The energy cleaner is the mattress pads that go with them. 
because, well, they work. I'm not worried about getting these things back. I get about one a quarter back, shipped back to me. I always wonder uh, what these people did. I opened the box on one. The cigarette smoke smell almost knocked me over. You think you can consume that kind of tobacco and be healthy using energy cleaner? Well, uh, you're wrong. Energy cleaner will help, though. Most people, most of the time, $285 should be included. Uh, check out the details at my website where you can place your order using PayPal. PayPal is really neat. You do not give up your credit card number when you use PayPal. That's why it's so, so secure. You can also call my toll-free order line 24 hours a day, 800-592-9543. I say again, 800-592-9543. This is Firearms Monday, and we're going to get to Dean's question. Sam, do you recall? I mean, excuse me, Lane's question. Um, Sam? Yes. Yeah, so the question was about the question yeah, was I, about I was, an AK. Yeah, I, I was just going to finish up with: uh, do, do you want a stamped or, or a milled receiver? My recommendation: if you got the extra money, get a milled receiver. Uh, if you want to spend a little less, there's nothing wrong with a stamped receiver. However, it uh, the original was one millimeter thick. It's very reliable. They, I don't know, 20 years or so ago, I'm not sure, they came out with a 1.6 millimeter receiver stamping. It's almost as rigid as the milled. You can get one of those. Uh, I don't know if they're still important, uh, importing them, but it was a VEPR from Russia. They call it the Vepr. It was an excellent, excellent, just beautiful. It had an RPK uh, front trunnion. Just you just can't get any better than that. But if you can, uh, if you want a mill receiver, I would say Arsenal out of Las Vegas. They make a beautiful line of AK stamped in mill. But uh, I, anyway, that, that's my two cents. <laughs> okay. All right, Sam. You got any follow up on right, Lane's yeah. comments? Okay. If you're willing to accept the inaccuracy of an AK system, which I'm not personally, but if you're willing to do that. Um, a, a milled receiver is more rigid, so technically it should be more accurate. But here's the problem with the AK design: the the barrel to receiver joint is not uh, doesn't have integrity. So every time you fire the gun, the barrel points in a slightly different place. That's why you have a gun that's not as accurate as some of the other designs that are out there. But I have a question for your caller. What what trigger do you have in your best AK system? What trigger system do you have? Well, uh, due to the laws, they are the 922R made in USA. I've used Tapco. Uh, Arsenal has some. Uh, there was a place in Houston, another another place called Arsenal. They they had some. And uh, how, but they were how many pound, pound, how many pound how, how many pound pole is that trigger? Uh, you know, I've really never measured them. I, I put them in there for legality, and, and uh, they work. <laughs> see, and, and, and see, this is, the, this is the problem. So so you buy an AK, you buy a nice milled receiver. The barrel doesn't really fit into the receiver that well, so you don't have control of the barrel. And then you get yourself a 6- to 8-pound trigger, which is extremely difficult to control with precise shots offhand. Now, will an AK run? Yes, the AK has lots of strength. It has inexpensive ammo. It has large magazine capacity. It has the ability to run and not jam up. Its run ability is really good. You could run 500, 1,000, 1,500 rounds through an AK without cleaning it, and, and it will run even when it's dirty. So you have to understand the specifics. The devil's in the details. Um, if you're a 140-pound guy, um, that doesn't get to practice a lot, you're not going to be very accurate with an AK because it's got a long trigger pull, it's got a stiff trigger pull, high poundage. The barrels move around because of the barrel to receiver joint. Wouldn't recommend it. If you're an experienced warrior, you're a tier one guy, or you're a big guy that works on a farm or a ranch and you've got good hand strength and you've got the time to practice on a regular basis, the AK can be can be a really reliable weapon system for you, but it, but understanding the nuances, the the subtle little things like the trigger pull, the the potential accuracy of the gun, how quickly can you double tap with an AK? Have you ever done? Uh, has your caller ever done an El Presidente drill with the AK? 
Does he know uh, well, how well it performs on multiple targets? I've never done that, but uh, I'm not even sure what that is. But I have fired rapid fire, you know, on the range, and uh, you know, I don't hey, think anybody's going to buy an AK to be a nail driver, you know. <laughs> No, I'm not totally understanding. Will you do me a favor? Will you, will you call in next week? And I want you to do a drill with your AK because I'm really interested because you're an educated guy. You're more knowledgeable than the average AK user out there. But I want to know. I want you to set three targets up seven yards away, and I want you to fire two shots in the first target, two shots in the middle target, two shots in the right target. And then, and then reload your magazine, and you only have six rounds in each magazine, do a reload, and then fire two shots in the right target, two shots in the middle, and two shots in the left target. So you're going left to right with the first six shots. You're doing a magazine reload, and you're going right to left. I want to know how quickly you can do that and not miss the target with any shot with your AK. I'm really, really curious because that's the standard we use for analyzing equipment in battle. That's a little test that we do that gives us a standard. We can compare this system to that system. So if you would do me a huge favor, try and do that test in the next week or two and call back in and tell us what your time was. Was it eight seconds? Was it seven seconds? What was it exactly? You know what I'm saying? What, what, what range are you talking about? I mean, as far as distance. Seven yards. Seven yards. 21 How, how feet. long? 21, 21 feet. feet. Okay. Well, that's, that's <laughs> Seven yards. Right. Well, I may, it may take a while. When I moved uh, out of a uh, large city, I had to give up my range, and I'm no longer – Kind of in limbo. I have to use another person's range card and ability. So it might take a while to get through that, but I will try it. But uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, uh, okay. Up close and personal, twenty-one feet. All right, I appreciate it. Sounds good, Lane. We appreciate hey, thanks for the call. call. That's homework assignment. What what radio show gives out homework assignments? That's what we do here. Our next caller is Dean in West Virginia. Good morning, Dean. Good morning. A long time no call in. Um, I myself am an M1, A1, M14 guy. I like uh, hitting things at a thousand, thousand, fifteen hundred yards out there. Um, now the question is, considering the, the uh, shenanigans such as uh, the ATF's uh, uh, Fast and Furious project, et cetera, et cetera, what is the best way to detect if, if you buy a weapon from a dealer that is working with the ATF? What is the best method of seeing if there's a transponder or transmitter on your weapon so in the future you would be located in the woods? Uh, like you hit it with a, a transmitter and then you have a, a frequency spectrum analyzer. What frequencies would that be? Uh, have you had any experience with this? Yeah, I, yeah, I know a little bit about that. So the only way to proof a gun or a room or anything is to have what we call a ComSec specialist. It stands for Communication Security Specialist. These are the guys that sweep the rooms where we have compartment and meetings, okay? You've got to have somebody with the right equipment to sweep something to make sure it's not transmitting. But I, I can tell you this. Uh, you're probably not going to have to worry about it if being in West Virginia, because there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of call for that. I think that that's a that's a, a one millionth of one percent slice of the pie right now. I don't know of any dealers out there doing that right now because it's expensive technology and it and it takes it, it takes a, a little bit of work to install it. And I just don't think that's a cost effective strategy. So I don't think that there's there's hardly anyone doing that. I wouldn't worry about it, to be honest. Okay. Uh, can I ask another question? Sure. Go sure. ahead. All right. I bought one of those big Bill Clinton rifles when they came up with all the muzzle brake laws and outlawing this and outlawing that. And uh, to get around it, uh, manufacturers were, were doing anything. And one was I have a, an AR-15 made by Century International Arms, and on the end, the muzzle brake is literally held on by these little, three little set screws. And if you bump a tree or something, the end of your barrel there's flopping around like a chicken with a broken neck. Um, uh, do you swap that? That those barrels are hard to find for that gun. Now, where would you get those to replace the barrel? 
Is it an AR-15 uh, model in 5.56? Yes. Okay, so I would go to Brownells and order a nitrided AR-15 barrel with a half-28 thread and put a threaded brake on the weapon system. And you can probably find a barrel on sale there for $125. Uh, uh, spell that, Brownell? Brownell. So Brownell, they're, they're yeah. massive. They're, they're huge. Bravo, -O -O Romeo, Oscar, -E Whiskey, November, Echo, Lima, Lima, Sierra. Okay. Yeah, go to brownells.com and order yourself a, a new barrel because that, that barrel is a really cheap, cheap, cheap barrel. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Hey, Dan, you're welcome. Roger that. All right. Thanks for the call. We're solving problems here, aren't we, Sam? Every day of the week is what we look you know, for. One of the things about, uh, I like the Brownells uh, ink on paper catalog. Uh, and I'll go through there. Say, for example, I'm looking at uh, upgrading my uh, my Ruger 1022 or one of my Ruger pistols. I'll find things I don't know even exist in there uh, from some of the aftermarket suppliers. It's an amazing catalog, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's just, they carry a tremendous amount of stuff, and they have multiple brands, so it's a great place to just kind of take a peek to see what's out there. And when it comes to installation, uh, you need to call Sam and, and look at getting an installation done. If it's anything uh, more complex than changing out a stock, and sometimes even changing a stock can become complex, can't it? Yep. There's a, there's a lot of little things that experts do that make the installation of a stock or the installation of a barrel make your gun quite a bit more accurate. So well, there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there, but, you know, it. If you don't know exactly what you're doing and you haven't been trained by a pro, you'll often wind up with a better product if you let an expert uh, make the changes for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, it, it may, people may want to avoid the expense, but uh, I know, for example, uh, my first Ruger pistol, my Ruger Mark I, I thought, I looked at that, oh, I can take that apart. Well, I almost destroyed the thing. <laughs> <laughs> attempting to take it apart. I finally, I took it to a gunsman. I said, here, can you fix this thing for me? Uh, the the Mark I and the Mark, Mark II Rugers are notorious for uh, not being uh, easy for the, the homeowner, uh, the, the gun owner to uh, disassemble, aren't they? Yeah, they can be tough. So, John, for example, on your three hundred eight, have you shot that since we nitrated the barrel and put a brake on it? Um, that's a good question. I I probably did when I first got it back. That's been several years ago. I need to get that bolt to you, and, and uh, I, I need your whatever's the best mailing address for you to get that o over to you. But it's been uh, that's been what four or five years or more. Probably three, three and a half three years. years. Okay, all right. Well, I've had a lot going on in my life, as everybody knows, so that, that's kind of faded into the background. Um, so I don't recall specifically what, what that uh, – that's probably the well, – as, as soon as I got it back, then what I would normally do is just take it to the range immediately just to have – just to check it out and see how it was doing. So I, I most likely did do that, but I don't recall the results. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it shoots now that you've had me assemble it. So, so I tightened up your – threaded barrel joint, and uh, I cut you a new crown, and uh, I installed uh, and threaded the barrel and installed a brake with a very, very precise thread fit. So that thing should have gone from a three-quarter minute gun to a sub-half-minute rifle with those two. Well, and that's that about right. Fit. It was about a three-quarter minute rifle, and if it's sub-half-minute now, that, that would be just dandy, obviously. Uh, and... Uh, Yes, so uh, things can be improved. Uh, I've owned that rifle since, my goodness, uh, the late 1980s, something like that. Um, and, uh, oh, something I wanted to mention, you're talking about the uh, the barrel and, and the receiver fitting on the AK. The uh, the, the well-known British 303 has a similar issue, and they call it a wandering zero, doesn't it? Yes, and, and so... Here's the, here's the main problem from a mechanical engineering perspective. When you slide a barrel into a receiver or you thread it into a receiver, if the joint is sloppy and 
your rear sight or your optical sight, your scope, is on the receiver, it's not on the barrel, then when the barrel moves around in the receiver, the sight can't follow the barrel. And so you get this wandering zero where you don't hold zero the way you could if you had integrity to the barrel receiver joint and you have integrity to your mounting system. Right, right. Well, these are nuances uh, that, that most men that own and women that own rifles simply don't know, and that's why uh, consulting with a professional like yourself can save them a lot of grief uh, and possibly making a big mistake in purchasing the wrong weapon system to begin with, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it, if you buy something from us, you, you will get a barrel and receiver that are fitted with integrity. That is one of the key elements to accuracy. You'll also get a weapon with a better trigger. You'll get a weapon with a, with a barrel that's nitrided that can shoot 10 times as many rounds as a normal barrel without wearing out. You'll get mounts that have integrity. You'll get a scope that's, that's actually mounted where the reticle is lined up with the bore center, and that's a trick. You can't do that with the gizmos they sell at Brownells. You have to have some pretty specialized equipment because the reticles aren't lined up with the scope knobs perfectly. They're plus or minus a degree and a half. So there's a Hold lot to thought. know. Hold that thought. We got our last break. Hold that thought. We have our last break. We'll be right back. Tired of being lied to by mass media? It's growing more and more apparent today that news is received less and less through standard media outlets. Even with a growing audience every day, RBN is beginning to direct more efforts into social media. Social media and the use of the Internet is fast becoming the primary source of people for news, regardless of demographic. RBN has set out to provide some of the best news on the Internet through republicbroadcasting.org and also has begun to use the tools to our advantage by way of social media. Republic Broadcasting is now operating a Facebook page to function as yet another avenue to have our collective voice reach new audiences across not only America, but across the globe as well. The Facebook page features not only news, but also an RBN player to listen to our broadcast. Get involved by visiting Facebook.com slash Republic Broadcasting and liking our page and share it with your friends and family because you can handle the truth. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. J.R. Moore here on Monday, the 5th of August. We're not going to take any more calls. We've got enough time to treat them properly. Uh, bottom line is, if you have a question about a rifle, shotgun, pistol, optics, you need to give Sam Andrews a call at 417-718-2597. And uh, is uh, your training schedule posted at uh, your Facebook page at Freedom Center USA on Facebook? Yes, the reloading class and the long class schedule are up on the Facebook page. All right. Well, uh, Saturday is my first trip to your facility. It's a beautiful facility and, and a very pleasant part of Missouri. Uh, and uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's always making improvements. I didn't get to see where the, the uh, uh, climbing and repelling tower is, is going to be built, but I'm looking forward to seeing that uh, location next time I'm down there. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting it built. Um, we're going to be working on uh, bathrooms and the road uh, this fall. We've got a new heavy-duty tarp up that's like 15 times stronger than the last one. So hopefully this will survive the next storm. And yeah. uh, we've got lots of shit on the firing line now, so everybody's happy about that, uh, particularly this time of year. So um, we're excited about uh, what's coming up for next year. It's going to be going to be full tilt next year. We're going to have uh, instructors in almost every week in the summer. 
Absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, a quick word to all you preppers out there. Don't mess around with these hardware store tarps. Get the heavy vinyl ones that the truckers use. Uh, if, you're, if you have a ranch or a farm, you go through a lot of tarps, and this is a way to buy them one time and be done with it, isn't it? Yeah, we bought uh, we bought these this large, you know, 24 by 80 foot tarp that was 15 mil that was about twice as thick and four times as strong as a hardware tarp. And the first one lasted a year. The second one lasted 10 days. So right, we've right. gone to something that's 24 mil, weighs over 300 pounds, and it's just uh, incredibly strong. We're hoping now that the bungees are the soft failure point. Right, right. Well, I got one of those vinyl tarps myself, and it's been in direct sunlight for uh, nearly 20 years and still is in good condition. Well, Sam, uh, we've got about uh, oh, two minutes here to get whatever word I want to get out, sir. Yeah, as things get crazier on the political scene, don't get emotional. Get prepared. Make sure that you've got some sealed ammo. Make sure that you've got the ability to operate at night. Make sure that you've covered yourself logistically, food, water, and ammo. And remember that the good guys always win. Absolutely. Could not give better advice myself. Thank you, sir. We'll have you back next Monday. John, have a great week. Thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, well, uh, Sam's wife is uh, checking her schedule to go with us on the uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line in February, and we'll get confirmation of that in a few days, I hope. And uh, tomorrow, we hope to have uh, Steve Ben Noon with us, uh, former CIA field operative, first hour. My friend Leon Green, second hour. Wednesday, we'll have my friend Professor James McCanny, first hour, and Jeff Nyquist, the second hour. It'd be the usual full week, getting a lot of great information out and taking your questions, calls, and comments, as always. Uh, that's it for the day. Get the medical supplies, your energy cleaning, your essential oils. Now, while you can, your firearms and ammunition, never, ever get up your guns. Please do a fun, safe, productive day, and God bless America. <laughs>